All right, guys. Um, I'm just just give me one sec. I'm just trying to get this this set up here. Tim, I'm just uh I'm I'm not going to start anything. I'm just trying to get all the kinks worked out here.
Hey, Tim, uh, let me know when it's good time to start. Otherwise, I'm just, we're just gonna, we're gonna just go, um, we're gonna wait until, um, until Matt is ready, is finished. Um, we're gonna wait until, um, until Matt is ready, is finished. All right, Tim, so we're just going to start then? So welcome guys. Uh, today we are going to be making face drugs. Um, I just need one more second here. I'm a little bit of a air computer problem. Okay, so there's a little bit of a delay here, so um, let's see here. Um, hey, Marianne. Uh, we're just going to give a couple minutes, uh, maybe one more minute, and I'm going to start. I really need the whole hour here, so um, so I'm going to I'm going to start just in, in a second here. Uh, All right, so I'm guessing uh, that this is working. I'm just trying to figure out how to... Oh, I got it. All right, I got it. Somebody comment something so I can see if this is working. All right, well, I'm not sure if I can see the comments or not, but... Oh, there we go. Thanks, Misty. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to see the the comments as it goes. It's weird. There's a little bit of a delay here, so. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm trying to watch it and do it at the same time. But whatever. I'm just I'm just going for it. Uh,
There's just there's just like a there's like a delay. So anyway, um, I'm gonna do a workshop on face jokes today. Uh, I'm gonna try to get through this one relatively quick, and then I'll show you how I throw them on the wheel uh, afterwards. There are some in the back here uh, on this cart uh, that I made. Um, so that's it. Uh, I will. I'm gonna get working, and I'm just gonna talk as I go. You can type in comments. I, I have a feeling that I'm able to see them, uh, but there might be a little bit of a delay. Um, there might be a little bit of a delay uh, in my answer because um, they're not coming through in real time. Um, but anyway, so this jug I made yesterday, uh, I've let it stiffen up all day. It's, it's sort of at that stiff leather hard stage. Um, it's getting a little bit on the dry side, but um, I'm gonna just have to deal with it. So what I like to do is where I'm gonna make the mouth is I, I start out and I like to just um, make like a dent. And what happens is it just makes it look a little, the, the mouth look a little deeper. You know, feel free to throw, put questions in. I'll, I'll try to answer them, like I said, the, as, as, they, as they come through. And if, if I don't get, uh, get your question answered now, I will answer it later. Ah, oh, Louisiana, how's it going, guys? So once I, once I make the, um, the dent for the mouth, uh, I, I go back and, and you'll notice that I, I don't do a lot of slipping and scoring, um, only on the bigger pieces, uh, the bigger pieces I add, do I do that? Um, you know, I've been doing these for a long time and, and this just, to me, it's more about the consistency of the clay. Like I feel like I, I'm getting it at the right point. Um, and I, I, sh it, they should be okay with, uh, without the scratching. Um, you know, some people will argue with me about that, but you know, the, the end thing is, is if the pieces stay together, then, then they're, it's all good. Plus for time's sake, um, it goes a little faster this way. All right. So what I did is I just added a coil, um, and you can see from, from pushing that mouth in, it really has like the, a, a little bit more depth. And what I like to do with these jugs is um, before I put the teeth in, this is something I started doing a year or so ago, two, a couple years ago. I'll put, uh, this is um, Mako Stroke and Coat. And um, I will paint this right on the gums now. And then I'll stick the teeth right in there. Yeah, I, I, when I make these, I try to make them different shapes. I mean, to me, it's sort of like when you're painting a pumpkin um, or uh, carving a pumpkin. If it, the, the shape of the, of the actual, uh, the gourd or, or whatever, the shape of the pot, um, it has a lot to do with how it's going to look in the end. Um, so I like to kind of change up the, the shape of the jugs a little bit just to keep them, uh, keep them a little more interesting. All right. So this is, this is red. Um, and I just paint that on there. And now the teeth that I'm going to use in here are pieces of porcelain. And they're just like, they're just little bits of porcelain that I I, I made uh, into squares and then I kind of sanded them a little bit. And then you just jam them right in there. And the nice thing with having the, the, the underglaze on there is that it just makes glazing the face a lot easier. Um, I dip it in a little water but it kind of gives you that like, you know, it looks like the tooth is inside the, inside the gums because it is. And again, they're just little, they're just little pieces of, of porcelain. All right, put that in there. 
you don't want to go too far. You don't want to go into the jug. You know, then it'll, it'll have a hole in it. So next thing I'm going to do is the bottom lip. Uh, again, I'm just starting off with a, a coil, uh, kind of tapered on the ends. I'll show you. I just roll them out in my hand. Okay, that's it. I'm going to shape that into a, a, a lip. And we're going to just stick that on there. We're going to push it down a little bit. It's hard to do when you're trying to make sure people can see. It's a lot easier when you're just, just having at it. But and what you guys should do is 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 make one, you know, make one and and tag it, tag it in the feed, um, you know, in, in the comments or or you know, go um, you know, message me in the uh my Instagram or um you know wherever, you know, just you know, tag tag your finished ones in the in the feed. I like to see them. You know, always, always great to, to see new ones. I make a lot of these, uh, lately I've been making a real lot. It's just something good to do when, um, you have a lot of extra time. So I'm going to score up for the nose here. This is just like a scratching tool. Uh, Avia, I did not throw the head yet. I mean, it, it is thrown. I'm, I'm going to do one. Uh, I will, I'll throw one at the end. Um, but right now I'm just trying to get through the, this part. So one of the things that I always tell people when I, 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 I do these face jug workshops and, um, you always want to start off with, with more clay for the features than, than you would think that you need. Um, as you, as you smooth them out and uh, blend them into the head, you wind up losing about a third of the size. So if you start off with like real weak features, um, you're going to end up with real weak features. You know, you want to, you want to make sure you start off with them a little bit big and then work backwards, you know? So I'm going to push this nose on. Make sure you get right up in those nostrils. Now, I love this tool. This is a uh, Bill Van Gilder makes these tools. Uh, these things are great for all sorts of things, but. Yeah, I'm just gonna smooth that up. And you can see it's starting to look like a face. You know, it's got a nose, it's got a mouth. Um, as I'm working here, now I start to see like kind of where I'm going to put the eyes. I usually don't have too much of a plan for these as I start on them. I just kind of let them, let them sort of come out how they want to be. Um, one of the things that... Uh, I always tell people when they're doing them for the first time or just starting out, you want to try to, don't use a lot of water. Um, you know, try to smooth out as much as you can with dry fingers before you start adding, adding water to it. Uh, once you get that slip on the surface, it makes it hard to move the clay around. You wind up just moving the slip that's on the surface and, um, you know, not actually like blending the, the, the clay together. Uh, so I don't know, I think it's important to, to try to work with as little water as you can, um, you know, get it smoothed out the best you can with your fingers and then go back and, and smooth it. Oops, I picked up some of the red there. Uh, now let's fix that. All right. So, hopefully everybody's doing good with this uh, coronavirus thing. You know, bummer about Ensika. Um, 
you know but this is super cool these guys are they're putting together this is a, a super super cool week of workshops and I make, want to make sure you get right up in those nostrils you know flare them bad boys out You know, you'll be able to rewatch this, so I apologize if I'm going a little bit fast, but we started a couple minutes late, and if I want to get to the demo part, um, the throwing demo, I got to go a little bit quick. So now I'm going to do the top lip, and I'm going to start that the same way I did the bottom. I'm just going to, I'm just going to taper a coil. Right, and we're gonna, it's gonna look like that. You know, it's like I said, start a little bit big. We'll just fold that. Mm, that's a little too big. All right, so now we're gonna put that on here. And we're gonna smooth up the edges. Of the lip. And then, so your face on your lip, you have like this, this thing, it's called like a filtrum that's here. So this thing, let's push that in real good. Kind of blend it into the nose. One of the things I hate when I see on face jugs, and I know some of the traditional ones have it, is that they're you know, each feature has like a line around it. Like it's, you know, like in a kid's coloring book, you know, like the, like if you look at your face, the parts all kind of blend into each other. Um, you know, and I like to, I, I, I like to do them like that. I like to, to have them kind of blended, uh, you know, look at the jug from different angles. Um, try to find, try to like, if you see those lines, you know, try to get, try to make them go away. You know, try to to make it all just look like it's, it's one cohesive piece. Um, it's too bad. I, I, it's it's weird doing this. I, I wish I could. Uh, you guys could talk back at me. You know, I feel like I'm just talking to myself, which I am. Um. So I'm located in uh, Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Um, it's really nice out today. Uh, we've been having some great weather and the spring is here. Um, you know, it's definitely uh, a bummer with this, this whole infection virus. You know, we're having one of these, these tremendous springs. That we didn't really even have a winter. It just kind of, you know, it was like a short and rolled right into the springtime and the weather's been great but you can't really go out of your house so that kind of sucks but i'm able to get to my studio so that's good you know check us out i think tim put a link to the instagram on there um link up with me on instagram and you know i post some, some cool stuff on there uh, i'm thinking that um, we are going to do some, some more demos, uh, this, this week. Uh, I'm going to try to do like a, a tin foil sagger and a, and a Raku demo, um, online soon. Uh, my wife is a school teacher, high school art teacher, and she's teaching from home. So we're going to try to, um, we're going to try to do that, uh, this week too. I just have to move. I got to move my Raku kiln to my house. Um. And we'll, we'll try to make that happen. But 
stay uh, stay connected and you know we'll try to we'll try to keep you posted on what's going on with that if you want to join in and watch all right so there's your nose there's your mouth uh, I'm gonna make some eyes now we're gonna go I'm just gonna make like a, a little bit of a indent where I'm gonna put the eyeballs I'm going to indent that a little bit more, just a little bit. And you can use something like this, like that, that'll help too. And if you guys have any questions, by all means, type type them in. Um, I should be able to see them. Uh, I'm not sure, but. All right, we got some eyes here. But, so, I'm gonna make the eye pupils now. Uh, I like to use this thing it's just like a you know a little stick with a ball on the end um, and then what I'll do is when I when it's time to glaze these guys I will I'll just put some black under glaze into the eyeballs um, and that's it you know that'll that'll make it look like a pupil you know you can add a piece of clay in there too you know people do all sorts of different ways whatever whatever makes you happy you know whatever you think looks looks right um you know i kind of change the way that i do them sometimes i will change it up but right now that's the way i like to do them how thick do i make the jug i don't know i mean i throw i try to throw it is is thin as I can um, if you if you make it too thick by the time you add all the clay onto it it's probably gonna gonna crack or blow up you know so throwing like a nice a nice um, you know uniform thin form is, is probably best I, I wouldn't see any reason to make it thick All right, so that this is my top eyelid here. All right, I'm gonna just just gonna place that on for now. Well, I'll go ahead and smooth it up. Clay body firing routine. Okay, so the clay body doesn't really matter. Whatever clay you work with, um, but what I am working with is uh, standard. This is one eighty two. It's a white stoneware. I will fire these at cone six. Uh, some of the ones on this cart um, I have thrown with a higher fire clay, uh, and I will put some of those in my wood kiln. Um, you know, and they get fired to cone. 11 or 12 depending on how the firing goes um but you know again whatever whatever it is that you're doing it doesn't really matter you don't have to do anything different for your firing um uh, as far as the jugs go you know maybe take them maybe when you bisque them um you know you want to make sure they're really really dry uh what i like to do is is um I'll put them on top of the kiln or I just let them pile up on carts for a while. But if I'm in a rush, I'll fire them on top of my electric kiln while I'm bisking. Um, and let them, let them get nice and, and dried out. But you, you definitely don't want to rush the firing with these because there is a lot of stuff added onto them. Uh, I'm losing the... Uh, I'm losing the, the comments as they as they go through. But 
I'll, I'll look at them again after. They're just kind of scrolling through, so some, some of them I might be missing. Um, but I'll try, to, I'll try to answer them uh, in the comment box a afterwards. All right, so I'm just going to give him a little bit more... Uh, give him a little bit. All right. So that is his face so far. All right. <laughs> I figures I, I I'm you're doing this video in in my uh, uh Eric Cardu. How's it going? Um, I am, uh, my sister's texted me and asking me if I've seen the great pottery throwdown, telling me I should try to go on it. Uh, do you have a problem with your clay being different levels of, different levels of what? Dryness? Um, I actually, I like the jug to be a little bit on the stiff side so that I can really like push on it. Um, and I like the clay that I'm adding to be on the wet side uh when it's a little bit too too dry it just doesn't it just doesn't seem to 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 flow the way i like it to flow i mean i as you can see like this clay that i'm adding on is very soft um if it's not soft enough i'll add like a wet rag into the bag and, and let it sit um you know let it sit overnight or just you know curse and struggle and and try to do it with clay that's not right but um but this is this is actually uh this is act clay is really like kind of perfect um you know you don't want to have to fight with it to get it to uh to stick on you know and and part of that is because I don't score uh for the most part um so you know, I like to I like to have the clay a little bit more more soft. Uh, it's funny I, I don't I didn't catch who said that, but with the ambidextrous thing, I mean, uh, that's just the way that I've learned how to work. I try to I I definitely have like my, you know, I I work with both hands. Um, you know, I, I always have, and uh, at one point when I was first learning how to throw, I had broke my my elbow. Uh, and then another time I broke my wrist uh, on my my right hand, or my left hand rather. So centering uh, became an issue because putting the, the pressure on it. So I just learned how to center and do it the other way. Um, you know, it's it just it just works. It just works that way better. You know, you're kind of never really doing anything with just one hand. You're kind of doing it with both. So you might as well get comfortable doing it both ways. Oops. Uh, another thing when I'm doing these two that I notice is you really want your nails to be cut short, um, your fingernails, if if they're even the tiniest bit long, um, you wind up like scratching, gouging the jug all up. All right, so how are we doing on time? Pretty good. All right, so we're coming we're coming down to down to the end here. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, two more little um, little wrinkles on this guy's face just because I think he he wants them. Uh, and again, what I do with those is I'm just, I'm just rolling out like a coil, a little thin coil. I'm cutting it with this awesome tool from Bill Van Gilder. If you don't have one of those, uh, and you're serious about making pottery, I would buy one. Um, uh, that's like one of those tools that like, uh, I have a couple of them because if I can't find, find mine, I get, you know, I get all aggravated. So... You know, when you're putting on handles, um, you know, and you'll see when I do this one for cutting like the tabs off the end, uh, for really, for an anything. I, I use that I use that tool every day that I make pots. All 
All right. Just gonna smooth that in. And I'll probably go back and, and smooth this a little bit more, um, a little bit more once I, uh, once you guys are done. I just wanna make sure, you, you kinda get the idea. I wanna make sure I have enough time. You know, stuff like that, like all that bumpy, crusty, cruddy stuff. Like um, when I do like these, I do these with high school kids, you know, um, if you don't work with clay regularly and, and you don't really get it, you have to understand that the clay, thanks, uh, Darlene, the, you have to understand that nothing happens to the clay in the kiln besides it gets hard. Like, I think that people have, uh, especially like beginners and, and like, I do a, a lot of these face drug workshops with people that have zero clay experience. They think that something happens like it melts or like, you know, becomes like, um, you know, fluid inside the kiln that uh, all the, the lumps and bumps are gonna smooth out, um, you know. And as you know, when, when you glaze over something that's rough, you, it just, it stays rough, um, unless the glaze is really thick. But, um, you know, you wanna make sure, smooth it out the best you can. Uh, sometimes if you're smoothing a lot, you get the, the grog in the clay starts to come up to the surface. It's not a big deal. Just go back when you're done, um, smooth it out with your finger and, um, you can kind of push it back in. So that's pretty much it for this guy. He's going to get, he's going to get, um, I want to leave myself 10 minutes to do this, uh, 10 minutes to do this, this demo, uh, on the wheel. I'll show you how to throw one of these. Uh, I'm going to make his ears now. Uh, and what I do is I just roll out like a cookie. It kind of looks like an Oreo cookie. I cut it in half. Uh, we'll put one ear here. We'll put one ear here. Stick them on. Yeah, smooth them out a little bit. Flip them around. Make sure this back part is blended in nice. <laughs> yeah, it's whoever just said that. It's not like baking cookies. And I feel like that's what people think a lot of times that haven't really had a lot of clay experience. They think that you put it in and it kind of gets hot and, and smooths itself out. and. Uh, that's not the case, you know, and it's, and it's so easy now to go back with a sponge or like a wet finger and fix up all the, the, the imperfections than, than it is to try to, to try to go back and, and, you know, I see, you know, students of mine that they want to sand things and they want to, you know, grind it and all this stuff. Like if you just take, take the, take the time and do it now, um, uh, it makes it much easier. Now, another thing too that I, I forgot to mention. So you probably have noticed or maybe you didn't notice that there is like a cup on top of this this thing. Uh, the reason that I do that, uh, there's two reasons I do it. One is it keeps the rim from drying uh, so that at the end when I put a handle on it, it's still wet enough um, for me to attach it. Uh, now watch, I'm gonna just make his, his ear, his ears look a little more fun, All right? That's cool. Um, so I do that, I do that for, for drying reasons, uh, keep some, keep some moist, uh, um, but also, uh, especially when I'm doing classes with these face drugs, I do that, um, the tendency is to want to pick, pick the thing up from, you know, especially with like, I don't do ones as big when I'm doing classes or a little bit smaller, but the people want to pick them up by the, uh, by the neck. And, um, that's a, a spot that, uh, definitely will wind up breaking if you try to pick it up by there. So I leave that on there just as a, it is kind of a, a, a reminder, um, not to pick it up from there. So I'm going to put a handle on this guy. Uh, let's see here. Let's try to make this thing so it doesn't spin. Yeah, it's good to look at it from the back and, and, and see if there's uh, there's anything that you're forgetting. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just roll out a lump of clay that is gonna be my handle. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull this like you would a regular handle. Hopefully you can see that. You know, we'll give it a little bit of this. Now, uh, this tool again is great for like stuff like that. I mean, see how nice it cuts that? And we're gonna just, I like to kind of flatten that out a little bit. Score that up. Score it up here. Score it up there. I don't need all that. Now I'm just gonna push that on. And do the rest of the pulling of this guy right off the uh, right off the pot. All right. Maybe I have to turn that. Maybe you can see that a little better. And as I pull it, when I pull my handles, I like to give them just a little bit of like, I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of pulling up a little bit. I just like the shape that it makes, you know, it's all personal. Cut that. Maybe we'll take this. And just smooth out any little bumps and lumps and junk. All right. How's that look? All right. We'll bring this guy back around. And that is it. Okay. So that's that's my guy. Uh, we have 15 minutes left um, together. I'm going to move this camera real quick. Uh, bear with me for one second. Um, and let's see, how am I going to do this? I am going to, let's see, we'll unplug from here. I am going to flip the camera around. Guys, just give me one sec. Still there? All right. Yeah, Oops, a lot of comments. I don't know, let me scroll down to the bottom. Can I please show it when it's fired? Sure, I'll show it when it's fired. I'll, I'll, post, I'll post some pictures. Yep. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna, can you guys see okay? I can't really read, I can't really see the things too good, but just uh, somebody type, you can see see the wheel here, right? All right, so the one, <clears throat> the pot that I'm gonna throw is not quite as big as this one. Um, just for time's sake, I just wanna get, get through this kind of quick. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this guy, let's see here, I throw standing up. I don't know if anybody else of you do. I like working like that. Uh, this is about five pounds of clay. Right, so I'm just centering this. This clay, this clay is actually really stiff, but because I don't know when I'm going to be getting another clay delivery, I'm trying to work through some of the some of the less perfect clay that I have around. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up. Alright, 
just pulling that clay up. Uh, this is uh, standard 182, uh, but I work with a couple different standard clays depending on on how, what kiln I'm going to be using. But I, I like this this clay body, although recently it's been coming a little bit on a, a little bit stiffer than I like it. All right, so there is a cylinder. I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of this junk on the bottom here. And now we'll start to shape this. I'll, I'll make this one shaped kind of like the one that I just did. Kick wheel. Uh, I I did I train on a kick wheel. I didn't train on a kick wheel, but I used to have a kick wheel. Um, I do I do like kicking them for on some things. Uh, if you're having trouble standing up, just keep practicing. I mean. Um, it's definitely much better on your back. I worked in a factory for a few years uh, making pots and, and everybody threw standing up and I didn't think that I would be able to do it. But after, you know, a couple of, a couple of eight hour days, you know, you, you get used to it. I mean, it definitely for, for like um, ergonomics and, and like your back and just like, moving around your studio. I mean, throwing standing up is like the way to go. But I fought it at first. Uh oh. Anybody that knows me, I never crash them. I usually would try to save it, but today we are short on time.
Yeah, people don't like how noisy Brents are. I, I, I hear people comment on that a lot. I, I usually have music playing in the studio, so I generally I generally don't even notice. Uh, you know, I don't hear it. Um, I think a quiet wheel at this point in my life would freak me out more than noisy one does. You know, to me, it's part of the... The noise is part of the, the rhythm of it. So I'm, I'm just going to... I'm just pushing the bottom of this out to make the lower part of this jug. start to start to bring the top in a little bit here Yeah, that's true, Diana. I, 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 I definitely like. I definitely listen for the speed sometimes. Um, as weird as that sounds. But I, th I think I think if I had if I had a wheel that made no noise at all, I, th I, I seriously think that that would that would throw off my my game. All right, so that is that. out a little bit uh, because I don't trim these I like to go back this is just a, a putty knife like a palette knife and cut all that crap off give it a little undercut That's it. What how we do on time? Uh, 56. We're right on time. All right. So check out my Instagram. It's, uh, I think Tim put a, a link up there. Hook up with me on Facebook. Uh, you know, we have an Etsy page. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, I do do, I do quite a few demos on here. If I'm throwing something kind of fun, uh, I try to, I try to share it. Uh, pfft. That is pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions, um, just type them in. And uh, well, uh, that was, well, the first one was five pounds. I just cut that piece real quick. I think that was about probably a little bit more than four. Uh, awesome demo. Thank you. Nice jug. Great presentation. Thank you. All right, guys, everybody, um, keep making stuff. Enjoy your time. If you have some free time with your family and your your art during this whole thing, but stay healthy and, uh, you know, try to stay inside, you know, let's get this thing done. Um, you know, get back to our regular scheduled lives. Uh, if you uh, real quick, I'll give you a quick, um, I'll give you a quick, people always want to see how my wheels set up. They ask me that a lot. So the way I have the wheel set up is, um, is the, uh, I have like pallets that I, I sort of covered um, with linoleum, but my wheel, my, my pedal I have actually set in, in the floor so that as I'm standing, uh, my feet are at, at an equal level. So I'm not standing 
with one foot, uh, you know, kind of crooked. And that's something that I think that people have a problem with is if, if, you're, if your pedal's up high on one side, you're standing kind of cockeyed. Um, you know, so, you know, that's something to think about too, if you do want to try stand, standing up, um, you know, and then I just have, you know, I just have like, like bricks and stuff to sort of get to the height that, that I want to be. And I also use a mirror on the, um, I use a mirror on the, behind my wheel so that I can kind of, I can watch from there. Uh, all right, quick studio tour, sinks, kilns, lights for this thing, jug, stuff uh we have another room over here where there's more carts full of stuff but um all right have a good one and uh stay healthy